Uh, today we will go to uh, introduce how to simulate stable scheduling uh, with our uh, provided program framework. Uh, so in this in this tutorial, uh, we mainly uh, try to make all of you know uh, how to use program to do the simulation. Um, and this tutorial is uh, related to your uh, bundles assignment three. So uh, if you have any questions for this tutorial or for your uh, uh, assignment three and bundles, uh, you can contact me through this email. Uh, so today's tutorial mainly have two goals. Uh, for the first one, uh, we will uh, go back to review the data, the basic data structure queue, uh, and uh, to uh, understand uh, the property, uh, people uh, property of the queue. And the second one is to practice <coughs> uh, to simulate people scheduling with the queue. Uh, so uh, for the queue, we will introduce both concept, uh, concept uh, prior, uh, property. Uh, and also we will talk about our implementation in this tutorial, which will be used uh, in, this, in this tutorial and uh, bundles assignment three. And the second one is simulate uh, fable scheduling. Uh, we will first introduce the, the data structures and how we uh, consume the input files. Uh, and last, we we'll talk about our uh, program structure. Uh, so for the queue, um, I think all of you have learned about it uh, in your data structure uh, lecture. Uh, so here, um, we mainly go back to see the concept. So a queue here is a, a linear collection in which the entities in the collection are kept in order. And uh, mainly there are only two operations. The, the first one is in queue and the another one is in queue. So the in queue means uh, the addition of elements to the uh, backend of this queue, uh, which means uh, when we need to uh, add a new element uh, to one queue, we can only add it to the backend. And the DQ here means uh, the removal of elements from the uh, front end. So this means when we need to remove some elements, we, we must uh, remove the first one at the beginning and, and then one by one. So with this, you can, you can find that uh, for the first element to be queued, it will be the first one to be dequeued. So, Q has this priority. So it is a kind of faithful data structure, which means a first in, first out. And the first, first element added to the queue will be the first one to be removed. So, so you can find the, prior, the property is a similarity to the faithful scheduling. So we will utilize Q to uh, simulate faithful scheduling. And then we will talk about how to implement Q. And you can find the source code from Blackboard. Uh, so in our provided source code, uh, we already implement a link list. So for the link list, uh, the structure is like this. First, we have an empty head node. Uh, and then it has a next, a next pointer, which will point to uh, A1. And then a1 point to a2 and a2 point to a3, and a1 a2 three are the value stored in the node. So in this way, we can have a link list, and then we use the link list to represent Q. So uh, in our definition, the head of the Q is the uh, is the end of the link list, and the tail of the Q is the head of the link list. So, we, so as shown in this figure, once we need to add a new element uh, to the queue, we need to add a new element between head and A1. So 
So if we want to have the, the Q operation, we just need to remove A3 and head will, will then be A2 for the Q. So in this way, we can use linked list to represent Q. And for the uh, implementation details of linked list, you can go to the source code. And uh, with that definition, we can uh, define, uh, we can declare some functions will be used uh, to implement Q. So the first one is uh, initial Q. Uh, uh, initial Q, so we can use that function to generate an empty Q. And the second one is uh, is, um, but is empty Q. So this will be used to, to check whether the Q is empty. And then we have in Q and DQ for the operation. And then the front Q means we can get the first element at the head uh, at the uh, head of the uh, at the, at the front end of the queue, so that we can get the data. And then we will talk about how we implement it. <coughs> so first, uh, we need to implement the init queue function. So we just uh, simply create do this create function implemented in linked list. So it will return an empty link list as an empty queue. <coughs> it is very uh, simple. Uh, and we only generate an empty, empty head node, then we can return it. And then for the uh, is empty queue, uh, we utilize the is empty function from a link list. So it is similar. Uh, we just need to check whether we only have one hand node and we can return the result. So these are two basic functions. And then we will talk the uh, complicated uh, functions. So in Q, DQ, and front Q. First, we introduce in Q. And this figure shows how we add a new element uh, to the Q, which is represented by the uh, in list. So for the in queue, we can only add a new elements at the tail of the queue. So, uh, which means we add a new element at the head uh, of the linked list. The uh, operation should be like this. First, we uh, generated a new node which contains the, the data we need to store. And then, uh, we break the or break up the original link between head and A3 node. <coughs> then uh, we make the new node B point point to A3 and uh, the head point to B. So in this way, we link them together. First from head and the next pointer points to B and this next pointer points to A3. In this way, we we add B into this link list, which means we add B at the tail of the queue. So uh, in the implementation, we, uh, we implement uh, with a function add head. And here is how we implement add head for the link list. So first we will, uh, gen we will uh, do some do memory allocation for the new node and we assign the values to the, to the new node. And then we will uh, make this new node point to the original A3. And then we will make the head point to this new node. So in this way, we connect them. And we can return the head, empty head node. Uh, and then next function is for DQ. So the DQ is uh, simpler. We can simply uh, remove the original uh, node at the head of the queue and make a two point two uh, now. So uh, we can remove a one. Uh, and this shows the implementation. Uh, first, we will check whether the queue is empty. If it is empty, we cannot uh, remove it. Uh, so 
you mean what is the first element? Uh, what is the first element in the queue? So here, uh, in 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 our uh uh slice, the head and the tail is for the queue. So for the linked list, uh, we have the head empty node. Uh, and the first element for the queue should be A1 because uh, it is at the head end of the queue. And then for the linked list, uh, we just use it to represent the queue. So actually, uh, Actually, here you, you will you can only focus on this part. So from the tail and a three, a two, a one, and the head. So the the first element of the queue is is a one, and the last element of the queue is a three. So once we have an incorporation, we need to add the new elements at the tail, and the queue means we remove the the first element uh, in the queue. So understand. So this head is uh is used by the linked list. Yes, the head points to the tail of the of the of the queue. Yeah. So okay, so let's continue. So this one, this uh, this part shows the shows the implementation. So after we check whether the queue is empty, we can uh go through the go through the whole queue. So as we have mentioned, uh, the head node, uh, the head node is the tail of the queue. So we 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 go through the whole linked list, the whole queue from the last one to the first one. So uh, every time uh we can. Uh, make it to point minus one, and until we find uh, the PT is A2, so it's the last two. So in this in this case, uh, we know that uh, A2's next next node uh, is uh, is the first element of the queue, so we can remove it. We just set set A2 point to now, and we can remove 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 a1 here uh, and uh, please note you can find in the decorporation we will return the value of the first of the for of the removed elements here so it will return the value of the remove element in this way after we we remove the element we can still get the get the uh, the value of this node and similar to previous dq this front queue uh also have the similar uh logic but uh it will not uh remove any element it will just return the uh the queue of the at the head of the uh, return the elements at the head uh, of the queue so up to now any question for the implementation Uh, if not, let's continue. Uh, so now we go to the second part. Uh, we will utilize the program to simulate civil scheduling. And you can download the, uh, the source code from Blackboard. Uh, and in, in our provided uh, file, uh, there uh, uh, first uh, implemented the linked list. So include the head file and the source code. And the implemented queue, the source code and the head file, and another one is the simulation file. So this is this is uh, the file we use to uh, simulate civil scheduling. And also we have two input file, the process and queue's configuration. 
So now let's go to say how this part work. Uh, so first, um, uh, in our provided source code, uh, we uh, provide the data structure first for the uh, process. Uh, you can find uh, it can contain the uh, process ID and several arrival time or the service time execution times information. And then uh, for the queue, uh, because we use linked list, so, so every element should be one node. And the node contains the process. And then a next pointer and the alignment time and time slice. Uh, so this node, this two uh, time, time about uh, property will only be used in your uh, bundles assignments in this tutorial, we will not utilize these two these two parts. And uh, in this way, we can have the for each node, uh, the value is the process, and then we have a next pointer. So, uh, then uh, we talk about the uh, formats for the input files. Uh, the first one is process file. You can find uh, it is the same as we have mentioned uh, last week. So we will first uh, define how many process we have. We need to simulate, we need to schedule, and then for uh, following uh, rules, uh, we will define the process uh, with the process ID, the arrival time and execution time. And here is an example. So we have 10 process here and from, and the process ID will go from zero to nine and they may have different arrival time and execution time. So uh, in our program, we need first to uh, parse this, uh, this information to our uh, program or uh, to the process uh, data structure. Uh, and the next one is for the queue. So actually for the people scheduling, uh, we, we only need one queue. So the queue number is one. And you can find here, we, we still have a time slice, but uh, actually for the people scheduling, we do not need this. But here we have this time slice, which, is, uh, which aims to help you to understand uh, uh, the output. Uh, and the, the similar uh, format of the output will be used in your bonus assignment three. So here, this time slice is gonna help you to, to do some output. Uh, and then uh, we go to the program part. So there are mainly uh, three parts uh, in the uh, so the first part uh, will be the uh, initialization and uh, data uh, uh, reading part. So at first we will call the function read process file to parse process file and store the process information to the to a global array prop. And then we will, we will store this information uh, to uh to the local local array and each one will be assign the process ID and arrival time and execution time. And then here we we can we can sort we have this sort process function. It will be used to sort the process according to their uh arrival time and process ID. And then uh QNAM and uh get QNAM are used to get the queue number in the queue configuration. And then uh, process queue will initialize for, will be initialized first, and it will be used to store the queue information by calling uh, read queue configuration. So, uh, so in this way, uh, we can initialize the data structure uh, with the given information. And then, The second part 
The second part is to uh, do some calculation to finish the do some, do some calculation so that we can know uh, some basic information for the uh, process. And then the last part is to uh, finish the whole simulation simulation procedure. Uh, so here you can, you can find we first initialize the output file and the schedule function will help us to, to do some output. And then for the first part, uh, it's used to deal with the input files. Uh, and here uh, we have a global uh, variable proc temp, which is used as to first read the process. And here you can find we have the read process file. It will store the uh, temp uh, process information into this uh, global variable. And then we can use this, fun use this three function to sort the process according to their uh, arrival time and ID. And then the last two get queue number and read queue configuration is used to uh, process the queue input. <coughs> and for the details of the implementation, you can go to the provided source code. Uh, so in this, actually in this tutorial and your uh, bond assignment three, we have already you we have already finished all of this part. You only need to uh know how to use them and then the second part uh, is to calculate the waiting time uh service time or uh, turn run time and completion time for every process uh through this uh, function calculate and uh, here this figure shows an example <coughs> Uh, and here you can find uh, uh, for the uh, process arrival first, it will be serviced for it will it will be served first. And for the process arrival at the same time, uh, they will be uh, sorted by their uh, process ID. Uh, so this process one to three will be uh, scheduled one by one. And for other uh, process, they are have the similar uh, uh, rules. Uh, so through this, we can also calculate the waiting time, how many time the process wait, and turn on time comp completion time. Uh, so here, this this table can show the uh, how can we calculate this information. Um, uh, and here we. We use, we use this information for you. That's make sure that all of you know, uh, all of you can understand with the faithful scheduling, how can we uh, calculate, how can we schedule the uh, different process and at which time, uh, which one is scheduled. Actually, the most important part is the part three. So the third part is to use the queue and process we get before to simulate faithful scheduling uh, through this uh, schedule or function. So in this function, we can use a while loop to represent time. Uh, and in every loop, uh, the process array will be traveled. And if it is the for, uh, it, if it is the time for some process to arrive or to uh, complete, uh, we will do in queue and decode operation respectively. So, so uh, in this uh, in this figure, we show the uh, thought code uh, to in queue and decode the process. Actually, uh, out of, outside this box, we have a while loop, as we mentioned. So, so the temp time will use to represent the current time. And so every time we will go through the whole uh, array proce uh, process array, and you will find current time, some process arrived, 
uh, we will in QAs. And then uh, for the for the process, we will complete at this moment when we have this decay operation. And if we find some process finish, uh, we will set the flag, which which will indicate that uh, some process finish. So with this, so after that, uh, uh, we try to have some output. Uh, so our uh, basic rule is that for every part time slice, we will output a line. Uh, well, another another rule is that if some process finish without using up one time slice, uh, we will just output the information of this time slot. So in this way, uh, we have three situations uh, to output. But you may find uh, these three situations are, are very similar as we have mentioned last week. Uh, in in the multi-level feedback queue scheduling, uh, because here we because in this tutorial we we also use time slice uh, as the basic time slot. Uh, so here, uh, the the first situation is that uh, it just use up the time of one time slice, and no process finish. So we only output current process information. And the second one means uh, one process finish and it does use up the time slice at the same time. So we output the finished process information. And the third one means uh, one process finish uh, without using up the whole time slice. So, so this, this figure shows uh, the three situations and how we all output. So first, the flag is equals to zero, which means no process finish. And if we find a uh, one time slice finish, one time slice finish, so uh, we can get the information and do the output uh, for the uh, time slice length and the ID arrival time and completion time, uh, which the remaining time. And if we found some process finish, uh, we will go to the second situation. So one process finish and uh, use up one time slice. So we directly output the information for this process. And the third one uh, means uh, we didn't use up one time slice. So we need to uh, calculate uh, the offsets uh, in some degree and to output, then reset the flag. And then uh, we will talk about the output format. Uh, so the output contains the time slot of process ID, arrival time, or remaining time, which is uh, similar as the uh, last week's lab. So they have the same. They have the same meaning. Time slot means as to why. I denote the time interval starting at time x and end at y. And the process ID and then the true time information. So that uh, we use two functions to help us do the, to do the output. The first one is uh, init output file, which will initialize the file output log. Um, and the second one is outprint. So it will help us to output uh, one record in the output file. Uh, as we have mentioned uh, with the formats, so x1, xy, process ID, arrival time, and remaining time. Uh, so, so any questions for this, for this part, program part? Okay, if not, uh, I will show you how to uh, compile and run them. Uh, so first, you can download the, the source code and utilize the given make file to compile the to compile the program and directly run it. Uh, 
uh, and here in the in your terminal, you, you may find output like this. Uh, it, so it, this is the output of the uh, calculate function. And the second part, uh, uh, it will output to, to the output log file. Uh, and you may find the output in the, like this. So I will show you now. Uh, so here I have uh, already downloaded and uh, unzip it. I will directly uh, compile it. And here you may find uh, I have this uh, paper scheduler here. I have this paper scheduler here. So I can directly run it. So you can find in the terminal, we have this output. And I will show you the output in this file. Uh, you may find uh, in, in the output file, we have this. So which is the same as, as the slide show. And also we will have, I will show you the, the process. So here you can find uh, uh, this, this input is, is the same as the slide. So we have 10 process here. And after running the uh, scheduler, uh, the faithful scheduler, uh, we can have first the output. So this will show, show you that the first process to be executed uh, is process four. And uh, the arrival time is one and it is served as time one. So, so I show in the output, you can find the first one is process four from one to 11, remain time as one. And at the completion time is 12. So from 11 to 12, or it's finished. And then for following three process, one to three, you may find uh, they arrival at the same time and different process ID. Uh, so here I'm showing the output log. We have one to three process to be is scheduled one by one uh, according to their process ID. And then we have process six. Uh, you may find process six, the execution time is 46. So for the first four time slides, they will use up it and not finish. And for the last one, it only use six milliseconds finish to finish. And the time slot is from uh, uh, 82 to 88. And then for process file, similar, uh, we have three time slides and it just finished. And then for zero, seven, eight, nine, they have the similar uh, output for, uh, format. So in this way, you can find uh, uh, the output log is sim the result uh, is similar as this one. So uh, that's, so this will be the output of our uh, for scheduling uh, simulation. And for other parts, you can try to uh, check whether, whether it is uh, correct by yourself. Uh, and that's all for this tutorial. Uh, for this tutorial, you do not need to submit anything. Uh, and it is uh, for you to know how to simulate uh, favor scheduling. And uh, it will be helpful or for you all to finish your final assignment three. Uh, so that's all for the tutorial. Any questions? Yeah. yeah, if not, that's all for the tutorial. Thank you.